Let me ask you one thing. Explosions! What's good folks, it's Nightmare Frame here with a new Warframe video coming at you with a Nidus nuke build? You heard me right, a Nidus build that can nuke. Now if you're wondering how is this possible, that's all thanks to do with his larva and the larva augment. Larva burst. The main thing about this augment is that it allows you to recast larva. Usually you can't do so, and larva can be one of the most annoying grouping abilities, all because you can't recast it, and enemies can be stuck behind some obstacle, wall, door, whatever. You name it, and you're just stuck there without a grouping tool. But then this augment allows you to recast it, but at the same time, it offers you some additional perks. One being is that it will detonate and deal toxin damage. And the damage scales with strength and the amount of enemies grouped up within it. But then you're thinking, oh, it does toxin damage, but that's pretty weak against armored units. <laughs> exactly. And that's where we're pairing this ability and augment with the helmet ability Theros Strike. Theros Strike is Styanex's second ability. It armor strips and shield strips. So yes, it's a complete defense strip. And this defense strip is permanent. To be honest, that doesn't really matter for this particular situation. However, it also offers another thing, healing. Because notice, I replaced the fourth ability, Nidus's main healing ability. At the same time, this is going to be a very odd Nidus build because even though we're using Larva, we're not technically using his first and third ability, which can be quite odd because Nidus has the stigma around him where he's just a solo Warframe. And if you play solo with him, he's all about his virulence. He needs to step on enemies to build up stacks, deal damage so that he can be pretty much unkillable. But then it gets really tiring. Another interesting thing about virulence that people misunderstand is that it gives you energy. No, 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 no. It refunds energy upon cast. So each enemy hits will refund a portion of energy spent. And this energy refund scales off efficiency. So the more you spend, the more you get back. Okay, so here's an example. I don't have much energy, as you can see on the bottom right corner. But if I hit enemies with my first ability, I get some back. But this is done better if you group up enemies and hit them. You see how much I filled up? Here's a tip with virulence. Notice how when I cast this ability, I can't cast it again till it's finished its travel distance. So to reduce the cast intervals, what you can do is aim it at a wall. Now I can spam this ability. So when you group up enemies, make sure to group them up to a wall and spam it into the wall. And this way you can easily build up stacks pretty quickly. But hey, Nightmare, you said you're not going to use his first ability. Actually, we will only use it for the first 15 stacks because you need 15 stacks to get Nidus's passive. But after that, we never need to cast it again. And why is that? Because enemies killed within Larva have a 50% chance to give you stacks. All right, now let's actually take this to Steel Path to show you how it works. Okay, here we are in Steel Path. And I'm doing this in Mont. Funny enough, people thought that it couldn't handle Mont enemies. And I did show it on stream that Mont enemies are just normal enemies. Even if they deal more damage, they're still quite tanky. And they were worried about nullifiers. And that also wasn't an issue. Guys, nullifiers aren't your biggest issue. Do you guys want to know some of the most annoying enemies in the entire game? Thrax? Those Grenier units that throw that freaking spear that shoves you out of your Warframe? Oh yeah, those guys. And Ancient Healers, because they make their allies CC immune and reduce their damage. Nullifiers are nothing. And their other argument is that, oh, but Nullifiers will reduce your stacks. That's one stack every two seconds. How long are you going to be in the Nullifier bubble? Seriously. First thing I'm gonna do is group up enemies and use my first ability and watch how I'm shoving my first ability into a wall just to build up 15 stacks. After that, I prime them, armor strip, and detonate. Or you can just prime, group, armor strip, detonate. Very simple. Group, prime, prime, armor strip, detonate. It's that simple. It's, it's the most simplest. I know that's not a word. It is the simplest rotation you could ever do. My health is going down, watch, 900. Boom, fully healed. Group. It's that easy. And it makes Nidus 
mobile. That's one of his main issues, is that Nidus isn't mobile. He's quite a stationary frame, where he has to cast his first ability all the time to build up stacks. Also, now we got Xmas. I will use my Serata. I'm not using the Glaive, but the Serata. I'm armor stripping, so it's just better to deal raw viral damage. And it's easily done with the Serata, since it has the highest base damage. What? Is it the highest base damage? Correct me if I'm wrong in the comment section. But it is one of the highest damaging Glaives in the game. Also, pay attention to my stacks, by the way. Look, look, look at how my stacks are growing. We're at 60 right now, and I haven't even used my first ability ever since the introduction. Oh, look, I'm losing health. Boom. Fully healed. Even if I die, I have my passive. Pointing. See, I died. And I can easily get those stacks back. Alright, we got an Acolyte. Shields and armor gone. Alright, he's good. He's dead. He's dead. And guess what? With Theros Strike, you can fully strip Vor. He takes ages. Alright. Here he is. Armor, shields, gone. Raw viral damage. He's dead. Another good thing about the Saranta is that it will still deal Toxin damage, even if you mod it with an element. And Toxin will bypass shields, so it's also a great option to use against Corpus. Eximus, dead. See how his health took damage before his shields did? Because of the Toxin damage from Saranta. Very useful. Ancient Healer, giving protective aura for allies. Proc radiation, it's gone. Also, another great thing is that I'm using the worm here. The worm is so useful to actually prevent one status effect every five seconds. Which makes Nidus also a little bit more tanky. Ooh, this is a nice clump of enemies. Oh, beautiful. We even got a second acolyte. All right, violence, violence, please. All right, no shields, no armor, dead. The toxin DOT will finish her off. It's ridiculous, isn't it? Okay, with that demonstration aside, let's take a look at how I've built Nidus. Quick rundown. Replacing the fourth ability with Theros Strength this is going to be my defense strip and healing ability. You only use Verlins right at the beginning to give you your initial 15 stacks. After that, you, you, you don't need it anymore. And the rotation is group, armor strip, press two again. It's, it's that stupid, that simple. And for your Archon shards, I'm using two casting speed shards. Now I did do the build test where I didn't have these shards yet, and it was still doable. Still nuking just fine as you can see in the background footage. However, with the addition of these shards, everything felt fluid. A lot more fluid. It was just so seamless how I can group prime nuke. For our focus school, I'm using Xenric. This is a nice focus school for this particular build. What does Xenric actually offer? Well, it has, of course, Wellspring. Creates that little well around me that regenerates energy. But you also have Energy Pulse. This increases the energy orb pickup by 50%. Pretty useful. However, we also have Inner Might. Every 60 seconds, we get one free cast of an ability that does not consume any energy. All right, let's take a look at that build, shall we? In the aura, growing power for the 25% bonus strength to everybody within this aura radius, including me, of course. This is easily done when I prime enemies, and you, as you saw, I was doing a lot of that. So this aura has a very high uptime. In the excellence, Brimed Shorefooted, because spending less time on your butt is a huge DBS increase. Ba -ba 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 nightmare. Why do you need this? Nidus has his third ability. Come here. D too close. Did you see me using the, this ability? No, no, please answer me. Exactly. Because this ability is dead weight. I don't want to be stuck there pulling on this useless little guy just so I can, you know, resist a knockdown or something. I'm not standing in one spot. I'm always moving in different parts of the room. So for the consistency, I have this. And if you don't have this, just get a time machine. You guys don't own time machines? Come on, man. But seriously, 
Pain Threshold or Handspring. Very decent replacement. Strength at 209% with Blind Rage and the two Umbral Mons. I do have Overextended here for my main range. And I'm able to top this out to 209% thanks to Nidus's passive. It gets free 15% strength at max rank, so fairly useful. So with 190 range, I get 22 meters of a radio rainbow. suck and a 15 meter explosion with Larva Burst. Umber Vitality Intensify for strength and of course survivability, giving me a decent chunk of health. Prime Flow and Hunter Drillin are my energy economy mods. This gives me a large energy pool and this mod gives me energy when I take damage and Nidus is nothing but health. So him getting shot, this is going to trigger quite a lot. And for additional defenses, I do have Arcane Guardian, give me 900 armor for 20 seconds. And for additional strength, I do have Molt Augmented. Notice how I have a lot of strength here. Some might think, oh, you just need 200% for the defense strength. Why do you need all that additional strength? Well, because Larva Burst also scales up strength. So this increases my Toxin Explosion damage. For the Epitaph build, I've modded it for Viral and Radiation. The Viral is a damage multiplier done to the health. And since they're armor strip, that's going to be so beneficial for the Toxin damage to deal even more damage to their health. And for the Radiation here is to remove that Ancient Healer Aura because your main source of damage is Larva. And you can't deal damage if you can't group enemies. Damn. Yeah. You were, that is, that is a good point. Damn. And now moving on to the Serata build. Your usual heavy attack explosion build, but I just have one elemental mod, North Wind, because it's innate toxin. Boom, remove, we have toxin damage. Put a single elemental mod, we get viral. Why viral? They're fully armor strip. Viral, more damage done to the health. Another good thing is that even if you mod it for an element, it will still force proc toxin. So you have viral and toxin. For my companion build, I'm running the Worm Prime. Why the worm? Well, because of the gates. This is such a beautiful freaking mod. And for some additional healing, I also have Medi Rank. And it will occasionally heal its owner, Mystic Bond. This will give me one free cast after my worm has used five abilities. And finally, Menifal Bond to reduce its cooldowns. All right, folks, this is the Explosion Nidus build. So yeah, if you like this type of loadout, do try it out. Anyway, folks, that has been it for me. I do have enjoyed this video. And if you did, please feel free to leave a like, share, and subscribe for more Warframe content streams and so much more. Do refer to the description. Thanks for watching. And as always, a peace. Bye-bye now.